Today we're island hopping just north of Clearwater Beach with Captain Phil. We'll take you to a few islands we've visited on this channel before, and at least one that we'll be visiting for the very first time. Now in case you're new here, I'm Jamie and that's Skylar, and we've got a boat to catch. Our day of island hopping with Captain Phil and his wife Nilu began at Homeport Marina in Palm Harbor, just a 10 mile drive northeast from Clearwater Beach. From there, we'd be hitting four main islands, plus a couple smaller ones along the way. So hold on to your hats, cause this day of exploring starts now. We boarded Lazy Lightning and departed the marina around noon on a beautiful day in November. Those of you who know our channel well know that we've taken you on some boat tours before. We've taken you to Anklo Key, Shell Key, and Eggmont Key. But this is the first time we have our own private captain, which means we can go wherever we want. Plus, you can bring your own beer. After passing by a couple small islands, we had our first dolphin sightings within the first few minutes of our tour. And after a few minutes of chilling with the dolphins, we were back on our way to our first island stop of the day. And since Captain Phil lets you choose your own itinerary, we were heading to Three Rooker Island first, as it was the one main island in the area that we had never visited before. But before we check out Three Rooker Island, we have to say thank you to Captain Phil for inviting us on this island hopping adventure and for making this video possible. We'll tell you more about all the tours that Captain Phil offers a bit later, but for now, it's time to explore Three Rooker Island. We learned from Captain Phil that Three Rooker Island actually consists of two islands separated by a quarter mile of shallow water. And while Three Rooker is a popular boating destination on the weekends, the South Island was especially popular on this Sunday in November. In fact, this was easily the most jet skis we've ever seen in one spot in our lives. Due to the crazy amount of people on the South Island, we decided to make our way to the North Island, and thankfully, it was much less busy. One of the first things we noticed about this island was how clear the water was, and on an 85 degree day, it felt really nice too. So right now we are on the north tip of Three Rooker Island, and this is an island that we have never been to before, primarily because we don't have our own boat. Now this is an island that a lot of the big tours don't stop at, so if you want to visit here, you're going to have to have your own boat or hire a captain like Bill. While our first visit to Three Rooker Island did not disappoint, we couldn't stay long as we still had three islands to go. And our next island stop of the day would take us just a few miles to the north, where you'll find Ancloak Key. This long narrow key can only be accessed by boat, is encompassed by a Florida State Park and Wildlife Preserve, and has a fully functioning lighthouse constructed in 1887. If you're enjoying this video so far and want to see many more Florida islands and beaches, be sure to subscribe and turn the notifications on. We made it to the north end of Ancloak Key, which if you saw our Tarpon Springs episode, you know we visited the south end on a boat tour from the Sponge Dogs, but we could only stay for about 30 minutes. But today, since we're on a private tour, we could stay as long as we want. Just like North Three Rooker Island, we found the north end of Ancloak Key to be incredibly peaceful and relaxing. I think we're heading to the sandbar next. After a few minutes exploring North Ancloak Key, we made our way back to the boat, where we were excited to check out the sandbar, which lies just north of the island. And after just a couple of minutes in the boat, we reached the sandbar, where unlike Ancloak Key State Park, consumption of alcohol is permitted. Considering this fact, along with the stunning beauty of the sandbar, it came as no surprise that this is one of the area's most popular weekend boating destinations. Not content just taking in the views from the boat, Skylar ran out into the shallow water to experience the view from the middle of the sandbar. And while we show you some of this beautiful sandbar footage, we wanted to mention some of the other tours offered by Captain Phil. In addition to custom island hopping tours like this one, you can also book dolphin watching, shelling, and sunset tours with Captain Phil. Tours on the Hurricane Fun Deck 198R can include up to six guests and even a pet up to 25 pounds. And if you have your own boat that just needs a captain, Phil can do that for you too. With Skylar back on the boat, it was time to tour some more islands with Captain Phil. But before you even start on your own tour, you'll probably want to grab breakfast and coffee. 
and we're going to show you a great spot to do it less than two miles from the marina. Here at 526 Alt Highway 19, you'll find The Fix. Opened in June of 2022, The Fix is a newcomer to the Palm Harbor coffee scene. We found the interior of The Fix to be modern yet cozy, and the coffee menu to have just what we were looking for. And because we'd also need some food before our long day of island hopping, we ordered a coffee cake muffin and an egg sandwich as well. While Skylar predictably chose the pumpkin spice latte, I went with the vanilla, which I found to go perfectly with the coffee cake muffin. The egg sandwich was a hit as well, as it came on some delicious ciabatta bread. The Fix is open from 7 a.m. to 3 p.m. on weekdays, 8 to 3 on Saturdays, and 8 to 2 on Sundays. We're just leaving The Fix, and I really like that they make all their syrups in-house, and Skylar really liked that coffee cake. Yeah, I had the perfect amount of sweetness, which really balanced out those lattes, which were good, but really not that sweet. All right, now let's get back to the boat. Back off the coast of Ancloak Key, we spotted something in the distance that we just had to check out but we soon found this chicky hut to be private property, so we'd have to move on. We began making our way towards our next island destination, which is located around 10 miles south of the Anclote Sandbar. Approximately halfway to Honeymoon Island, we passed by the south end of Anclote Key, which we still found to be a popular spot for boaters and this kite border. At this point, you may be wondering what it will cost you to go on your own tour with Captain Phil. And while the cost will vary depending on the length of your tour, a four-hour tour visiting the islands north of Clearwater Beach costs between $475 and $500 depending on gas consumption. And as those of you who visited Clearwater Beach may know, a boat rental out of there can cost around that much without a captain. Our next island visit had us passing under the Dunedin Causeway, which connects the city of Dunedin to the beautiful Honeymoon Island, the only island on this tour that you can actually drive to. As we made our way westward through what's known as Hurricane Pass, we just had to go in for a closer look at one of our favorite Honeymoon Island spots, the Dog Beach, where not too long ago, we spent part of our day hanging out with these guys. In addition to one of the area's top dog beaches, Honeymoon Island also offers some great people beaches, hiking trails, biking trails, and some dining options. With only a couple more hours of daylight and plenty more still to see, we began making our way to our next island, which fortunately was just a quarter mile away. The farthest south of the islands we'd be visiting on this day, Kaladesi Island is actually connected to the bustling Clearwater Beach. But you'd sure never know that just from looking at it, as Kaladesi Island is as peaceful as they come. And while we had visited Kaladesi several times before, today was the first time we'd get to see the north and east sides of the island. Although we didn't have time to anchor at Kaladesi, we're still gonna show you more of the ridiculous beauty of this island from our prior visits. And those visits sure weren't as convenient as our tour with Captain Phil, as they required finding parking on Clearwater Beach and riding our scooters to the northernmost public beach access on the island. From there, you have around a mile and a half walk up Clearwater Beach before reaching the south end of Kaladesi Island. In case you were wondering, you couldn't always walk to Kaladesi Island, as there used to be a channel between Kaladesi and Clearwater Beach. That channel was eventually filled with sand during Hurricane Elena in the 80s, connecting the islands via the land bridge that exists today. If you're fortunate enough to travel to Kaladesi via boat, you can anchor offshore or utilize the 108 slip Bayside Marina. Near the marina, guests on the island will find a number of amenities, including a snack and gift shop with restrooms, rinse off stations, and a covered picnic area. Hikers can also find a two and a half mile trail system, but please do be aware of the rattlesnakes. 
In case you're deathly afraid of rattlesnakes or the thought of all this walking makes you uneasy, here's a little more beautiful Kaladesi beach footage to help you relax. Speaking of relaxed, Skylar was a few beers in and forgot to hold on to his hat. Thankfully, the rescue mission was successful and we were off to our next destination. With sunset nearing and a rainstorm beginning to approach, many would have likely called it a day. But wanting to squeeze the most out of this adventure, we decided we could stay out just a little bit longer. We made our way to the marina in downtown Dunedin, where we had caught an amazing sunset just a few months prior. And if you love shopping, dining, or a good weekend market, you should definitely consider a stop through downtown Dunedin on your tour with Captain Phil. After a few minutes of waiting out a rainstorm in the marina, the skies cleared up and we made our way back towards Palm Harbor, where along the way, we passed by some absolutely beautiful waterfront homes. Do you have a favorite island destination from our day of adventure with Captain Phil? If so, let us know in the comments. And if you'd like to book a tour of your own on your next Florida vacation, you can do so by visiting the website or calling the phone number below. With the Homeport Marina not too far away, we decided to make one final stop at one of several spoil islands, which as we learned from Captain Phil, were formed from the digging of the nearby channel. Located just a few hundred feet from the mainland, we found this spoil island to have a lovely little beach, some spots to hang our hammocks, and to be a promising future paddleboard destination. Back on the boat, we raced to the marina with hopes of reaching our dinner destination before sunset. We pulled into the marina around 5.30, just a few minutes before the sun would be setting over the gulf. And after a long day on the water, we were both absolutely starving. And fortunately, our dinner spot was right next door and came highly recommended by Phil and Nilu. We arrived at the Ozona Blue Grill, ready to eat and happy to find a spot on the sun deck. In addition to dining, we found the sun deck to also offer a swimming pool, which is available to patrons of the restaurant. Our drink orders came out quickly and just in time to enjoy as we watched the sun set over the water. Our food wasn't far behind and included the cod fish and chips special and the seafood pescatore. You can have it, I don't want it. Although I'm not a fan of squid, everything else was delicious and the poolside meal was a great way to cap off our adventure. While a tour with Captain Phil is a great way to spend a day, there are many other great things to do in Palm Harbor as well. And you can see those by clicking here right now. And as always, thanks for watching.